Call to order the City Commission meeting of Tuesday, January 8th, 2019. Let the record show that all commissioners are present. First item up is the order of business. Are there any changes to the order of business, Mr. Gaw? Uh, no, Mr. President, there are no changes. Okay, any questions on the order of business for Mr. Gaw? Not, I'd look for a motion. Move to approve, Mr. President. Second. Uh, motion to approve and a second. Any further discussion on the order of business? Hearing none, all in favor of the order of business as presented, state aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The order of business is approved. Consent agenda, are there any items on the consent agenda that commissioners would like to discuss? There are no items on the consent agenda that commissioners wish to discuss. Uh, I'd look for a motion. Make a motion to approve the consent agenda. We have a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. With a second. Any further discussion on consent agenda? Hearing none, we'll vote. Mr. Frederick? Aye. Ms. Trustum? Aye. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Ms. Walla? Aye. Chair votes aye. Consent agenda is approved. Uh, we have uh, three timetable items, but we will move, they don't start till 4.55, we will move into the non-timetable. And the first item up is our campground ordinance. And Mr. Gaw, you'll be handling this in the absence of Mrs. Murtha? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. President. Commissioners, this is the, at the last meeting, you had the public hearing and the first reading, so uh, the, it is included in your packet again. This would be the second reading and the, the final passage if it's approved by the commission tonight. And there are no changes? There are no changes, and to my knowledge, we've heard no public comments, uh, and there weren't any at the public hearing last meeting as well. Okay. Commissioners, any comments or questions for staff on the campground ordinance? <clears throat> Hearing no comments or questions for staff on the campground ordinance, we did have that public hearing uh, at the last meeting on this, but I'm going to open up for the public again. Uh, second hearing, if there's anyone with any concerns, please come forward about the campground ordinance. Seeing no one from the public has any concerns, uh, commissioners, if there are no questions or comments, I'd look for a motion. Mr. President, move to approve second reading and final passage of ordinance number 1665. We have a motion to approve 1665. Second with a second. Any further discussion or questions or comments on 1665? Hearing none, we'll vote. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Mr. Frederick? Aye. Mrs. Trustum? No. Ms. Walla? Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion passes on 1665. We'll move into city board appointments. Mr. Goff? Yes, this is something we, we talked about at the last meeting. Uh, City boards and committees and commissions all uh, expire, terms expire 1231 of various years. Uh, we have one before you today for reappointment, Lisa Giese to the civil service, and this would be for a new term to expire 1231 of 2021. Okay, any questions for Mr. Gaw on this appointment? This reappointment, I should say. If not, I would look for a motion on the reappointment of Ms. Move to approve, Ms. President. We have a motion to approve. <coughs> second. With a second. Any further discussion or questions on this reappointment? Hearing none, we'll vote. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Ms. Walla? Aye. Mr. Frederick? Aye. Mrs. Trustum? Aye. The chair votes aye. Motion carries on the reappointment. Uh, next item up is the U.S. Census uh, Complete Count Committee. Mr. Goff? Uh, President and Commissioners, this is uh, an initiative that's done at the federal level every 10 years. Uh, we're probably all very familiar with it. A couple of weeks ago, uh, the mayor and uh, Deputy Administrator Carlson and I met with some representatives 
uh, preparing for it. It'll actually be in spring of 2020 is when the count will start. Uh, they're, they're reaching out to several communities to get started, especially those communities that have seen substantial growth since the last census. And, and we know Dickinson is definitely uh, a candidate for that. Uh, one of the things they recommend doing in advance is forming a complete count committee to get the word out, especially when you have a population like ours that has been uh, moved in and maybe do they consider themselves full-time residents or not? And, and what does that mean compared to the census standards? There's usually a vast difference there. So educating the community and how to uh, be counted and the importance of being counted is, uh, is really critical, I think, in, for our population base. Uh, so you have a resolution in your packet uh, to authorize establishing a committee that would be appointed uh, by the mayor, be representatives of the schools, uh, the university, community members, major employers, to really get the word out of what the census is and why it's important. So uh, we're, we're very supportive as a staff of this and, and we're, uh, we're excited to get a very full, uh, complete census. I know when I accepted this job, they said, well, how many people live there? And I said, well, they're not sure. It's grown so fast. They think around 25,000. So uh, getting that, that number in 2020 will be really exciting for us. And I do think it's, it's it's very important when I when I go out and I uh, go out to the schools and I talk to the young children they always ask you know why why don't we have this you know why why don't why doesn't this business come why you know they saw the signs for years the Fuddruckers and the IHOPs why isn't it coming and uh, I said you know I, I tell the kids they count rooftops they count how many bodies are here and ultimately that's what drives business and uh, to get them to <coughs> be part of this and talk to their parents and uh, make sure they, they're living here, they're working here, and they're going to school here, that they're part of the, the census, you know, part of the count for Dickinson. Um, they might have a residence in Oklahoma or Texas, but they're living here most of the year and they're working here, so they need to be counted here. Um, so I, I do think this is important and something that we need to get up and running quickly. To get that message out. I think the last time we had a census and so on, it was determined that it was determined that uh, every individual, according to the federals in a community, was worth about ten to fifteen thousand dollars on certain projects it, and so it, on. It's actually like seventeen hundred dollars a year, seventeen thousand dollars over the ten-year period. Seventeen thousand. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, seventeen thousand dollars. Every person that we don't count. It's a lot Basically, of and and one of the examples that the census uh, officials gave to uh, Mr. Ga and I was a, a city in Oklahoma that got hit by a tornado, and because they missed the population of their their university, they did not qualify for FEMA funding. And uh, the very next adjacent city got hit, and they had a full count, and they qualified for FEMA funding. Yeah. It's important. It's important. It's very important. So we're going to get to work on this early and, and get the word out and get these education programs out to the, um, the students so they can help educate their parents. So any other questions or comments on uh, resolu resolution 1-2019? Mr. President, move to approve resolution 1-2019. I have a motion to approve 1-2019. Second. With a second. Any further discussion or questions? <coughs> Not we'll vote. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Mrs. Trustum? Aye. Mr. Frederick? Aye. Ms. Walla? Aye. Chair votes <coughs> aye. Motion carries on 1 2019. We have a few reports. Um, the first one up will be uh, presented by Deputy City Administrator Carlson. Thank you, President Decker and Commissioners. Um, first of all, I'd like you to notice that you did get your 2019 budget books they uh, have been placed I hope you do use them if you have any questions on them at all um, please ask uh, we like comments on them and um, I think they they are well put together for you the other thing that I have is the budget and audit calendar and what that is is uh, we are planning ahead of the dates that we need the commissioners to be able to work with the city departments and we have the first set of dates would be June 11th and 12th 
which is the commission to meet with each department. This is where you hear all the wishes of the departments and, and um, what's, what their department needs are. And we're going to bring that down into two days instead of three and a half days. So we're bringing that one down to two days. But I want you to look at the June 11th and 12th to make sure that that date is OK, because I do want to set. And <laughs> hopefully we have everybody. <laughs> Ms. Carlson. President Decker, June 12th is not going to work for me. I will be out of town. Okay. So this is what I need to hear, and you don't have to make the decisions right now. The other one is July 10th. That one is where the commission meets with the executive team, and we finalize the preliminary budget. And so those are the dates that we need, and we are taking that from two days to one day, when we have one full day and we'll be done and stuff so um, please let me know either email and now that I know that Commissioner Trustum can't make the 12th we'll see what else uh, comes about and then we will adjust and then I will get it out to the meeting so that they're set in your calendars other than that if you have any questions concerning the calendars at all of the calendar at all or the budget books I would be glad to entertain any questions any questions for Mrs. Carlson on the calendar or the budget book and I would just advise all commissioners that uh, you get those dates um, to her as soon as possible so we can make some adjustments how, how much flexibility do we have do we we can go a little bit earlier in June or is that about the earliest you want to start we could go a little bit earlier yes I'm just kind of trying to take it away from commission meeting times, you know, trying to spread it out just a little bit. But I'd like to keep the two days in June together because you're going to hear all the departments and you need to hear it all together instead of a day in between. Uh, I was just thinking if it, if it works better, maybe the week, a week earlier. Um. Or I could do the Monday and Tuesday. I just can't do the Wednesday. Okay. So if that works. And that's what we can do. And I will send out... Um, once I get everybody that uh, look at their calendar, and if there's, and then I'll send out suggestions, and then um, get a response back that, and then set it. Great. Any other questions for Mrs. Carlson? Thank you, Mrs. Carlson. Um, we have Southwest Night, and City Administrator Ga, you'll be talking about that. Yes, Mr. President. This is an event that's <coughs> hosted by the, the uh, chamber. Each year, Southwest Night with the legislators. This year, it's Monday, January 28th from 5 to 8 in Bismarck. Uh, in the past, we've had a city table uh, at the event and also a, a booth that's staffed by uh, uh, some commission members, if you so desire, as well as staff. Um, we'll want to know pretty quick if you would like to, to go sit at the city table, uh, be involved. I believe Commissioner Treston probably has a little bit to add about the event itself. Sure. Um, so for those of you who may not be aware, Southwest Night with the Legislators has been a uh, biennial event since 1985. And it's been a real instrument for the Southwest region to have an opportunity to get before the legislators and discuss their issues, concerns, um, or any comments um, to the legislators. It is well attended by legislators and it um, is received well. We have changed the venue. It will now be at the Bismarck State College Bavendick Room. Uh, if you've been there before, it's, it's a beautiful facility and I think it's really going to change the, uh, uh, the kind of the details of the event and we will have Mr. Jenkinson returning uh, for his uh, roast. Uh, so to speak and we're really excited we've had a lot of positive feedback I've been visiting with County Commission throughout the Southwest region uh, we're really trying to get a lot of um, input and I think especially with this year and some of the things that are being discussed this session it would be great to have uh, the full Commission there if possible I think the last one we had I think every commissioner was there no. so yeah. I was there. <coughs> and um, we did 
last year or the last time we did take city vehicles and carpools. So I think that's an option as well, uh, riding with city staff and utilizing the city transportation. Anything else to add, Mrs. Trustum? No, I guess good. Mr. Yeah, Goff will just need Anything? to know who can attend. If, if you want to attend, let us know and Rita will okay. get it sent in. All right. All right. Thank you both. Uh, we'll move on to public safety and nothing from the fire department this evening, but we have something from the police department MOU with the drug task force. Uh, good evening, Mr. President, members of the commission. I'm uh, before you tonight to request the appro uh, approval of a memorandum of understanding with the Southwest Narcotics Task Force uh, to highlight some of the, the items in the agreement. Um, the city would provide financial manage management and compliance oversight to all grants received by the task force. Uh, the city would provide insurance coverage for any vehicle owned or leased by the task force. The cost of the coverage would be reimbursed to the city by the task force. Um, the city would provide credit cards to task force members for official business use. Uh, the task force would be responsible for paying off the statement balances each month. Um, any, expenses, any expenses occurred by the city on behalf of the task force will be invoiced monthly. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have about this MOU. We are requesting a, a approval. Okay, thank you, Chief Dossinger. Uh, any uh, questions for Chief, Chief on these uh, items within the agreement or just on the agreement itself? Um, <coughs> this just for the one year it would be continual okay okay any questions or comments on the MOU Chief Dossinger <coughs> did, uh, is this MOU new to uh, a new agreement between the city of Dickinson and the task force due to the changes with the funding and kind of the more uh, oversight we've had to take uh, um, yes. Um, prior to this, the, the, the City Auditor's Office of Stark County had managed this. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for Chief Dossinger? Not. I'd look for a motion on the MOU. Mr. President, move to approve MOU. We have a motion to <coughs> approve the MOU. Second. With a second. Any further discussion or questions? Hearing none, we'll vote. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Mr. Frederick? Aye. Mrs. Trustum? Aye. Ms. Walla? Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Next item up, uh, we have an engineering uh, task order. Mr. Kubis? Thank you, President Decker. Uh, if we want to advance the slide, there's a, a map to this first item. I think there was. Anyway, um, Last year, uh, a city selection committee met and chose KLJ to perform the construction engineering. Oh, perform the construction engineering for a, a South State Avenue water main project, which has been in the works now for uh, several years. I guess we don't have a slide. Well, I had a slide for you. It was just a map. But um, the, in general, the, the water main runs along South State <coughs> Avenue from um, the new street just south of the railroad bridge all the way to 8th Street South. And what it does, it, there, there's not a water main there right now. It's not like we're increasing the size. There's just no loop on that side of town. So this provides more flow to uh, the apartment units that are built down on 8th, Aven or 8th Street Southeast. and the apartment buildings that were planned to be built where the, the site was leveled at the very south end of State Avenue would also increase uh, some of the flows we would uh, expect to see at the fire training center east of or west of town there. So um, the reason we went through the selection, we had an agreement with KLJ to do this work um, and the State Water Commission asked that we go back and do another formal selection um, for engineering services on this project because we are receiving cost sharing from the State Water Commission um, for the construction and the construction engineering in the amount of 65%. So we went through that, that process and again selected KLJ. Uh, the task order before you for your consideration um, is for KLJ to provide 
bidding and, and construction engineering services uh, in the amount of $172,380. Uh, staff has reviewed this uh, task order and would recommend approval. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Mr. Kubis, what is, what is the total amount of the project estimated? <coughs> Well, estimated in our, in our five-year CIP plan, uh, we have a, a $2.5 million cost of construction for the project. And again, yep. that would be 65% covered by the State yep. Water Commission. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Kubis? Now I'd look for a motion <coughs> on this task order. Move to approve, Mr. President. I have a motion to approve. Second. For the second. Any further discussion or questions for Mr. Kubis? Now we'll go ahead and vote. Ms. Trustum? Aye. Ms. Walla? Aye. Mr. Frederick? Aye. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion on the task order carries. Mr. Kubis, you have a report on our sidewalk program. Uh, we do. Uh, I'll introduce it and then I'm going to turn it over to our chief engineering technician, Jerry Shear, backed by popular demand. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so th this will just be a quick recap of the projects that we did <laughs> last year for our, uh, for our 2018 sidewalk program. And then just a little segue into what we might be looking at doing for 2019. A lot better luck with that than me. So, so with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Mr. Shear. Good evening, Mr. President, City Commissioner. My name is Jerry Shear, Chief Engineering Tech for the City of Dickinson. I'm going to show you a little presentation here on the sidewalk program recap. First, we'll start with the we started out with a $215,000 budget. Wind construction was the contractor. We had a balance of $15,331. And the amount put on the residential special assessments came to 53000 And the city installed approximately 3,488 linear feet at a cost of 146669 oh. Now the red marks are the new sidewalks we installed. We're up on 9th Avenue East there with a mausoleum in the north of the St. Patrick's Cemetery. We tied those sidewalks together there and make it a lot prettier. Now we're on 10th Avenue East, the two top red marks there, we just tied those two sidewalks together. There was never existing sidewalk there. And then down further on 10th Street East there, north of St. Pat, or Dickinson Cemetery, we tied those sidewalks together on that part. Jerry, can I, can I interrupt you quick? If, if just to back up even one more step, if you remember last year as we went into this, um, we had increased the budget for 2018. It had been about $75,000 a year prior to last year. Um, but we, we knew we had quite a few city properties out here. So we made a, a real emphasis to focus on filling in some of the gaps in sidewalks um, that lied on city property. So Jerry's just highlighting a lot of those city properties now that, that we filled in with sidewalk. Here we're at 10th Avenue East and right by the recycling plant and there's that water storage. We went from the property owner on the bottom there and then tied it up, ran up to 7th Street. And next year we have plans of going from 7th Street to 9th Street. Here we are at Pine Tree Park by the old hospital, right west of the hospital. We tied the two sidewalks together there from the west to the east. If you have any questions, just give me a, just stop me and I'll ask them. All right, we're at 8th Street West. That is still the Pine Park. No, it's 9th Street West. Or that Pine Park on top, or that St. Joe's Hospital Park, right on 9th Street West up on top, there's a little section. Hey, Jerry, th these, you know, 
he'll, he'll highlight some areas that the park and recs actually did too, but these parks, and I guess as we dug into it, are actually the properties owned by the city, and that's why the city spent, spent our dollars putting sidewalks along parks, because these are city-owned parks, I guess. Now we're at 21st Street West and State Avenue there on the left. We ran that sidewalk along there all the way over to the property owner, which is Kelly Brown right there, to his property of mine. And then the owner, property owner right there, he continued that sidewalk over to Prairie Oak Drive. So that's all finished up there. And this is on Prairie Oak Drive. The city owns us three lots right there. And we finished, we tied those sidewalks together. This is a private individual there. He never had sidewalk there before, right north of the high school. And he put that all on his specials. And this is what it looks like. He had to do a lot of, a lot of work there. He put up a retaining wall. Then we had to make a, there was a catch basin right there. You see that little square box. We had to fade and shell that off and box it out. And this is the, for the Parks and Recs. They had a $60,000 budget. And they had a balance in the red of $4,634. But they did 1,808 linear feet. And it cost us $64,634. So Jerry, if I can pause you again. Um, af after we had bid this out, um, we talked to the Park and Recs. They had some, some areas that they liked to, uh, to use. And so we allowed them to use our city bid and they, they made a motion, and this is out of their own budget, that they made a motion to expend the, the funds that end up being $64,000 um, to fill in some sidewalks along park owned property. Go ahead, Jerry. Um, Mr. Kubis, I know this is, uh, we're notorious for doing this when you're up here, Mr. You're going to do it again, aren't you? I'm going to do it again because <laughs> we do have a timetable. And uh, so this, this will only take one more minute. One minute. Okay, I'll give you one minute. All right. I don't know. You this got a bunch of police officers behind <laughs> you waiting right. to get sworn in. So. <laughs> this is Parks and Rec's jobs there. We did this on 20th Street. We tied those two sidewalks together there. Oh. <laughs> and we're done. <laughs> there, there goes my minute. <laughs> the street there they tied the two sidewalks together right in there and now they sidewalk both in the north and south side in sim streets that's hampton in right there and then there's a little four season all seasons park right to the north on 16th ran a stretch of sidewalk there so they can walk to that park a little nicer and this is down on jc park by Fifth Avenue Southeast. We tied the sidewalks together there from the bottom up to the north. And this is down the Grest Softball Complex. We tied that together there from the, to the shared use path in the park. So now they can come, all the people down here can walk right over to the park or to the complex. And this is up to that uh, Veterans Pavilion. They ran some sidewalk there, a new sidewalk up to the pavilion, that square little artwork of mine there. And then they tied into that sidewalk right there just to make it a little easier for parking. People are using the park. And that should be the end. Thank you very much. Any All questions? Right. Any questions? Uh, Mr. President. I think it's very important that we continue with the city projects. Yep. Next year time. we got plans of. Um, uh, if we're going to mandate to the public that they finish their sidewalks, we need to set a good example. I finish our property. What so. we're discussing. Next year, the city alone, we have about 4,650 feet that we want to finish. About a mile. At a cost of about 182,000. And then the private sidewalks and curb and gutter for the 
they did about 930 linear feet of sidewalk and about 200 linear feet of curb and gutter. That was replacements. All right, well, thank you, Mr. Shear. All right. All right, we look forward to the report next year. Thank you for letting me finish. All <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, and we have a swearing in of police officers, Chief Dossinger. Uh, good evening again, commissioners. Um, at this time, I'd like to introduce to the community and to the commission our three newest officers to the Dickinson Police Department. Um, Officer Aaron Bates. Stand up, please. Um, Officer Bates comes to us from the state of Oregon. Um, he is a, a U.S. Air Force uh, member. He served six years in the Air Force with the top rank of a uh, flight sergeant. Officer Andrew Steadham. Uh, Officer Steadham comes to us from Hamilton, Ohio, where he worked as a correctional officer at the Hamilton County Sheriff's Office in Cincinnati. Uh, he enlisted in the U.S. Army Reserve as a military police officer in March of 2010. Officer Tyler Mahoney. Um, Tyler is a North Dakota native. Uh, in April of 2015, he enlisted in the North Dakota National Guards as a military police officer. Um, he previously worked as a football phlebotomist at St. Alexis and recently as a correctional officer in North Dakota State Penitentiary. Um, officer Bates and Officer Steadham graduated from the Law Enforcement Training Academy in Bismarck in December 14th. And Officer Maho Mahoney will be attending the academy uh, coming in February. This time, I'd like to ask the Administrator God uh, to swear him in, please. Very good. Thank you, Chief. I'm going to set your official oaths right here. Rita has instructed me you must sign them before you leave. Um, and I know you're police officers, but if Rita tells you to do something, you must do it. That's <laughs> the, the number one thing. And then when we're done, just another housekeeping. If you want to just tell the, uh, the commissioner and the community a little bit more about you, um, uh, anything you want to say uh, this is your chance all right we'll start off uh, I'll read this you'll repeat let's just start off I and then repeat your name I will support Constitution and the laws of the United States the state of North Dakota and the city of Dickinson to the best of my ability and that I will strive always to meet the highest ethical standards implicit in my employment and in the furtherance of the best public interest. Congratulations and welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You want to each step up and tell us a little bit about yourselves, we, what Chief hasn't told us? Hello, uh, I'm Aaron Bates. I'm, like uh, Chief said, from Oregon. Uh, my home city is Oregon City. Um, before the Air Force, I was uh, in school for criminal justice, and you know, I was found out real quick that school wasn't a huge favorite of mine, so I, I went on to find something different and found the Air Force, which Lo and behold, there was a lot of uh, schooling involved in that as well. They almost <laughs> mandated. So kind of got tricked into doing that. Um, my time in the Air Force, I was uh, security forces, which was essentially military police for the Air Force. And uh, I've done a multitude of different things. I was at Milestrom Air Force Base in Grand Forks, uh, Mon or Great Falls, Montana. I was in uh, RAF Falconberry in England. And I was uh, stationed, I finished out my career in uh, Grand Forks Air Force Base in uh, Grand Forks. Uh, during that time, I had the pleasure of um, conducting four separate presidential security missions, and I deployed it a uh, deployed a few times um, while I was in as well. Well, congratulations and welcome aboard. Thank you. Congratulations, oh. Mr. Bates. You're from Oregon. Yes, sir. It's only fair to tell you that in 2020, the NSU buys and we'll play the Oregon Ducks. <laughs> <laughs> you better call your buddies back home and let them know we're coming. <laughs> Thank you for your service. Thank you. Hello, uh, Tyler Mahoney. Um, pretty young, I don't have a whole lot behind me. Right out of high school, I joined into the National Guard um, with the MPs here in town, um, the 816th. They just started up its new company. Um, pretty young. I. That's all I got is literally the guard. Like I, I don't have a whole lot. I've done everything I can to try to get to the point I'm at right now, and I've done it a few years earlier than I anticipated. 
Um, so that's good. I worked at the state pen, so I have a little background with working with those kind of people, the criminal justice side, working with caseworkers. Um, other than that, I'm just ready to go. I'm a young guy. I'm glad they took a chance on me and hiring me when I was when they did. Other than that, little back history on Mr. Mahoney or Officer Mahoney. His dad was a sheriff's deputy yep. here in town. I enlisted his dad into the National Guard, and uh, and uh, so I. I I remember you when you were just uh, uh, I, a, a little kid. That's a <laughs> common thing around here. Is <laughs> so, so. Good or bad, I don't know, but that's how I hear it. Yeah. So, but welcome aboard, and, and uh, as Mr. Steiner said, thank you for your service too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hello, Major Stenham. Friends call me Andy. Uh, I'm from Ohio, home of the Cincinnati Reds. <laughs> Love to say that. Uh, I don't have quite the resume that these two do. Uh, right out of high school, I joined the uh, U.S. Army uh, National Guard as a military police officer. Uh, I'm working on transferring here to the Dickinson unit and uh, just looking to start a good career. Well, welcome aboard. Dickinson unit's a good unit. I recruited for it for 10 years. Okay. So mm -hmm. I, uh, I can uh, state that. I, the only one problem I can see is you're a Reds fan, and there's some <laughs> Cubs fans sitting up here. So. Uh, we'll make but, it <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome aboard and thank Appreciate you for your service. Thank welcome. you. Welcome. I don't, no, I'm not done with you yet. Either. <laughs> <laughs> Being from Ohio, I'm just going to assume that if the Bison challenged the Buckeyes, <laughs> they wouldn't want to play us. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, they'll sign their oaths here and then they're good. Thanks. This is one of the few times when an officer takes his pen out like this, it's a good deal. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, we'll move on to our next timetable uh, item, and that is the introduction of our new Dickinson downtown um, association, uh, I guess the title is Executive Director. Executive Director. All right. <coughs> Good evening, President Decker, commissioner, Commissioners, and City Staff. I'm here to introduce to you and to our community our new Executive Director. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm just getting rid of a cold. <coughs> Angie Eckelberg. She was born in Delaware and she grew up in Maryland. She graduated from Virginia Tech with a degree in hospitality and tourism management. She's married to Travis Eckelberg, who is originally from the Kildare area. He is an Air Med pilot for Sanford Health. They have ch three children, Jonathan, Ashlyn, and Justin. <coughs> and they have purchased a home to be part of our community here in Dickinson. Angie's prior experience as an executive vice president and director of operations for a nonprofit faith based organization will serve our, our association well. She also has extensive volunteering experience abroad that will round out her skill base. I, Angie has a few words to say to you this evening. I'll keep it short since it seems that's key. <laughs> Good evening, President Decker, Commissioners, and City Staff. My name again is Angie Eckelberg, and I have been working with the DDA and the DID for approximately three weeks now. Let me start by saying how incredibly thrilled I am to be coming into the organization at such a vibrant and exciting time. I have been brought up to date on plans for the town square, and discussions have begun about the how-to process of beginning the capital campaign that will accompany that. My predecessor has had success in growing the downtown association membership, membership and those businesses are excited about the future, including the Town Square project. In keeping with the mission statement of the DDA, which is to create a vibrant downtown through effective development, communication, promotion, and education, I will be working closely with members of the community, City of Dickinson, and the State of North Dakota. The short-term goals of the DDA are to continue to grow our membership in order to support our association and at the same time, the DID will be focusing on building a capital campaign to accomplish the goals set forth in the YETMOU with the city of Dickinson. 
A few of our long-term goals, which fortuitously align with the city's downtown plan, are to attract new businesses, encourage rehabilitation of older buildings, development, activating our downtown 250 plus days a year so that our businesses will be successful, as well as addressing current and future streetscaping improvements. I'd like to finish by giving my sincere gratitude to each and every one of you because of your generosity and heartfelt interest the downtown Dickinson is and will continue to grow further into the prosperous heart of the community that has been envisioned. Thank you. Well, welcome aboard. Welcome. Uh, Thank you. I'm sure you hit, hit the ground running. <laughs> Sprinting. Every, every, everything that's going on. <laughs> so any uh, other comments for Mrs. Eckelberg? Welcome, Mrs. Eckelberg. I think we know you have a lot on your plate and we look forward to working with you. And have watched the Bison game on Saturday, so we are fully embedded. Just, just so you know, the Bison did beat Delaware this year. So you know. I'm on a roll. Who's up next? You, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Montana man, you up next? <laughs> I don't think we got anybody from UND showing up. So, uh, thank you all. all right. I Good really luck. appreciate. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right, uh, we have a 505 uh, presentation scheduled, uh, Apex SRF facility plan presentation. Mr. Schneider. Yeah. Good, evening. Good evening, President Decker, members of the commission, Mr. Steiner. We're both NDSU grads, so we will be on the same page with you. <laughs> Good enough. Welcome, boys. <laughs> <laughs> um, along with me tonight is my colleague, uh, Mike Berg. We're going to um, discuss and present to you um, the facility plan, um, a little background on facility plans, why we need them. Um, I'm going to start off uh, talking about, uh, oh, this is officially, ah, uh, here we go. There we go. I'm going to start off talking about the state revolving fund loan program, what it is, um, how Dickinson's used it, and why we're here to talk about the next facility plan. Mike's going to tackle the, the wastewater collection system overview. And, and then end it with the facility plan. So Clean Water State Revolving Fund, um, this is a program um, that allows communities to construct water and wastewater infrastructure using low interest loans. It's funded by the EPA, administered by the North Dakota Department of Health here in the state, and Public Finance <coughs> Authority. There's two categories. Uh, drinking water SRF and clean water SRF. Of course, wastewater facilities, collection systems, treatment facilities are, are funded under the clean water SRF, which is, which is what the city of Dickinson has traditionally used uh, for funding your major collection system improvements and wastewater facilities. Currently, the city has one existing collection system um, SRF loan open. It was originally approved back in 2014 for $42. million. Several projects have been built with that loan. Um, the requested amount to date is 37.3 million with the remaining balance of 4.8 million that has not been um, requested um, by the city. Um, Mike's gonna talk about some of those projects that have been built, but you all know those major lift stations, lift station 12, west lift station, lift station 14, lift station five, um, the, the large diameter gravity sewers on the west side of town. Those projects that really enabled the city to grow with, uh, with, the, uh, with, the, with the recent activity out here. Those major collection system improvements were funded with this existing um, collection system SRF loan. Um, about a year ago, the uh, Department of Health announced a reduction in the interest rate from 2.5% on the existing loan down to 2% on new loans. Um, that also came with an extension of the, the maximum term of 20 years out to 30 years. Um, so working with staff on the um, additional projects that are out there uh, on the collection system, um, staff was interested in, in pursuing a new SRF loan. Uh, one of the requirements uh, of, a, of a loan is a facility plan. Of course, there was a facility plan um, developed in November of 2013 for that existing collection system loan. Um, this facility, this new loan will require a new facility plan. Some of it's an update, some of it's uh, a couple of new projects. Mike's going to go through that. Um, but one of the other advantages of the SRF loan program is not all of the money has to be used that you request. So that existing 4.8 million that has not been requested, that loan can simply be closed 
and uh, the remaining balance, I think the city's probably already paid some principal off on that existing on that loan that's there today. That loan would be closed, and then those terms would be would be finalized on that existing loan. Um, so with that, Mike's gonna um, go through the details on on some of those projects and then the facility plan. So the original facility plan was 2013. At that time, this map showed the expected growth areas for the city of Dickinson. Really, there were six different areas, and the objective of that plan was to determine the best way to economically convey wastewater to the water reclamation facility located in the southeast part of town. There was a study process of evaluating the existing collection system, the condition and capacity. We looked at alternatives. Ultimately, the preferred alternative was to convey most of the wastewater around the west side of town through the south to the water reclamation facility. This freed up capacity in the northeast so that some of that growth could be conveyed into the existing uh, infrastructure in town. This is the preferred alternative or the selected alternative. The next slide shows the infrastructure that resulted from it. Now there's a lot going on in this slide. The solid red lines are gravity pipelines. The dashed lines are pumped flow. And highlighted in green is the infrastructure that was completed from that 2013 facility plan. Still a couple areas that, that weren't completed. And these are addressed in the 2019 facility plan update. So this update starts with the old plan and builds on it. There's a couple items that are in the near-term uh, infrastructure improvements, and those I'll talk through uh, some details. Number one is the reuse fill station and pipeline. Currently, there's a pipeline running from the water reclamation facility in southeast part of town. It extends approximately nine miles west to the refinery, and at that point, it conveys reuse water to the refinery and also periodic uh, reuse water sales to the energy industry. The reuse fill station would provide a, a fill station at this location. Um, the goal would be to keep truck traffic or minimize truck traffic in town and provide an additional source of revenue for the city. The next improvement is in South Dickinson, the South Gravity Sewer. The South Gravity Sewer system is, has capacity deficiencies right now. This, this improvement would allow for development and additional growth. The South Gravity Sewer would start at 8th Street Southwest and run north to 5th Street Southwest, terminating in lift station number 5. The next improvement is lift station 1. This station is really the heart of the city system. It's the oldest lift station. It's located by Broadway Dam. Lift station one has capacity constraints as well. It serves much, as the, much of the area on the west part of town and south part of town. Here's lift station one. Now what you don't see is a 40 foot deep concrete barrel that is below the station. That's by far the most expensive piece of infrastructure in this facility. So as part of this project, we evaluated that concrete barrel, which was over 40 years old, we determined that the, the condition is fairly good with some superficial uh, repairs and, and we're retaining that piece of infrastructure with the new system. So the new project will add a new building on top. It will recondition the wet well. Uh, we'll pre-select pumps again, same as on the previous lift stations. New electrical and generator and new control systems. The final near-term project is the Sim Street uh, Wastewater Collection System Improvements. Now currently, all the flow in northwest, northeast Dickinson, north of the interstate, is conveyed down, to, down the 10th Avenue East Interceptor. There's a capacity constraint just south of Museum Drive. The other issue in that part of town is that the gravity sewer by Sim Street is conveyed south to lift station 11. Lift station 11 pumps it east to the 10th Avenue interceptor. Now over the last uh, few years, or 10 years, there's been backups a couple times in residences in that area. 
one of the deficiencies is that if lift station 11 goes down, there's an overflow weir where wastewater will flow across below the interstate down to lift station 18. Lift station 18 currently pumps north of the interstate up to lift station 11. So if lift station 11 fails, we have a circle. Uh, wastewater keeps pumping uh, around and has resulted in a couple of backups. So these two issues, um, have we've gone through a planning phase. We've looked at different alternatives. We've studied <coughs> upgrading lift station 11, but really it's a systematic problem that needs to get dealt with. The alternative shown here is just one of the alternatives, and that is to build a new gravity sewer starting at lift station 11, extending south. It would decommission the lift station 11. We would go by lift station 18, decommission that, extend south and west along the Dickinson drainage ditch to lift station 9, decommission that, and keep going south across Villard, across the tracks, into the existing infrastructure. You're, so you're saying that's going to be a gravity flow? Yes, in that alternative, it would all be gravity. So <clears throat> that gravity flow, if it doesn't get obstructed further down the line, should take care of the problem that we've had at lift station 11 over the years? That's correct, okay. yes. Currently, is lift station 11 a, a pump station? Yes. It is. Okay. Yep. So the costs for these near-term projects are summarized on this slide, along with a timeline for the expected improvements. The South Gravity Sewer is at 90% design, and Lift Station 1 is advertising later this week. The next slide shows the remaining projects. Some of these projects are, um, well, they're future projects. So Gravity Sewer from Lift Station 6 is a future project maybe combined with a road project, it will tie into the South Gravity Sewer. Um, there's an I&I &I investigation in the South Dickinson as well. The East Area improvements will be delayed until there's development interest in Southeast Dickinson. And finally, the Northwest Area um, Odor and Corrosion Control Project is also delayed to sometime in the future. And this summarizes the projects that are in the facility plan update. So, real, so what's the next steps in this process? So uh, as Mike showed you the facility plan, um, really the next steps is, is the city can choose to close out that existing loan. And if the city so chooses to proceed with a new loan application, we would submit that or help staff submit that along with this new facility plan that covers all of those projects near term and in the future um, sh should the city can see growth in those areas and, and need to build future projects under this existing facility plan. So leaving the project that's proposed to be um, ad, ad, advertised this week, Lift Station 1, um, that process, that parallel process can happen and uh, be funded through the SRF program. Um, this agenda item uh, really uh, for tonight's meeting is, is to take comments from the commission. If there's any comments from the public, we would address those within the facility plan. That's a requirement of the facility plans, is, is that this facility plan is presented to the public, to the commission. If there's any comments, then we, those would be addressed within the facility plan um, that gets submitted with the loan application. So with that, we would be uh, happy to try and answer any questions um, from staff or from commission. Any question from uh, commissioners, comments? Trust me. Mr. Kubis, are all of these projects outlined in our capital improvements um, timeline for the next five years, or are these additions? Uh, many of them are. Uh, you know, the near-term projects are. A lot of those future mm -hmm. projects are just projects we wanted to get on this facility plan so we didn't have to keep amending it um, with the Department of Health. So some of them are the near-term projects, um, I would say, um, probably five of those projects are on our, our CIP for the next five years. And then the remainders, we haven't programmed them into our CIP list yet. So by um, putting out another loan uh, with the, or another SRF loan, 
does that give us access to do these projects sooner in the timeline? Or are they, are they still programmed out? It, it, it certainly could. A lot of them, like Mike had mentioned earlier, are really development driven. Most of the projects that we did in the last five years right. were development driven. And, and so right now, we've kind of taken a pause. And I think with the opportunity with the, with the lower interest rates, it was a good time to update the facility plan, close out this old loan, and, and save a half a percent of interest which doesn't sound like much, but when we talk, the dollars we're talking for these sewer projects, it amounts to quite a bit of savings. Any other comments? I think the uh, lift station 11, the issue that we've had over the years, over there, we need to find a way to rectify that as soon as possible. Um, to, to me, I think that's the primary. Yeah. And then the, the water reuse too, so we can Develop that revenue source. So. Any other comments, staff? Any questions for President Decker? I think just to be formal with, with the requirements of the facility plan, um, if, if you could open it up for a public hearing, okay. that's one of the requirements of the okay. Department of Health. All right, we will then open up for a public hearing. If there's anybody from the public that wishes to come forward and speak to anything within the presentation, please do so. Seeing there's no one from the public here, we'll close the public hearing. I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll have some further discussion on this. So if anyone from the public that is watching this has any concerns, please come forward to a commissioner or staff and, and let us know your concerns. And uh, do we, we need to act anything formally on the plan itself, Mr. Kubis? President Decker and Commissioners, I don't think you need to formally um, do anything at the report because the, the loan application process will require okay. um, city commission approval and that will be submitted along with the report at the same time. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Schneider. All right. Uh, that is it for the timetable agenda. We have one item left, uh, public works. You have a task order. Thank you, President Decker and Commission and thanks. APEC for presenting that on the wastewater collection. I think it's, it's worthwhile looking forward, uh, especially with the interest rate in the years that we can put those projects out um, to continue to move forward. Um, this evening I have a task order, uh, an APEX task order uh, for a septage receiving station. Um, this project uh, is uh, being funded through budget, not through capital. Um, this is something we've been looking at for quite a long time. We've looked at different areas. Uh, different ways uh, to uh, put this station. Uh, this uh, currently, the septage now is being received by a manhole. That there's no regulations, and it's on a honor system, which doesn't work. Uh, and um, so, uh, currently, we're looking at putting it at the West Lift Station. Um, before we were looking at the plant, we looked at some other areas, but I think the West Lift Station will be the. I think originally that was the first site we looked at. Uh, it'll keep traffic out of town and on the west side of town. Um, the task order in front of you is to provide design, bidding, and construction administration services. Uh, and uh, this station will be at, the, uh, like I said, the West Lift Station. This is a 2019 budgeted item in the wastewater plant fund. Compensation for these services are not to exceed $44,600. If you have any questions, please let me know. All right, any questions for Mr. Zeroff? Not, I'd look for a motion on this task order. Mr. President, move to approve task order number three. We have a <coughs> motion to approve. Second. With a second. Any further discussion or questions for Mr. Zeroff? Hearing none, we'll vote. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Mrs. Trustum? Aye. Mr. Frederick? Aye. Ms. Walla? Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries on the task order. We'll move into public issues of, of city concern not on the agenda. If there are any public issues that were not on the agenda this evening and you have that as a concern, please come forward, state your name, and let us know your concerns. Seeing no one from the public has any concerns, uh, we'll close that.
And commissioners, do you have any items that you weren't on the agenda you wish to discuss? Hearing no uh, commission members have any items that they wish to discuss, I would look for a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. We are adjourned.